Hey guys, it's Heidi from My Reading Life here today to do the second part of my September wrap up. Um, I only finished another four books in the last half of the month, um, so I just want to quickly wrap those up and I'll give a little brief update on what I'm currently reading and that will be it for September. Uh, and the first thing I completed um, in the second half was Henrietta's War. News from the Home Front, 1939 to 1942 by Joyce Denny's. This is a fiction, fictional collection of letters that was written during World War II by the author and published in a, a, a periodical which um, the soldiers also were able to receive. So uh, it was an attempt to sort of lift everyone's spirits and keep uh, keep some humor in the uh, very scary and terrible parts of World War II. I found these uh, sort of little vignettes of village life in Britain to be charming and poignant and comical. I did very much enjoy this. This was one of my five star predictions for my TBR pile. I don't think I would consider it a five star read, but it was um, enjoyable and lovely and I would definitely highly recommend it. I would say it's probably like a four star for me. The other thing that I completed um, on audiobook was Faithful Place by Tana French. This is the third book in her Double and Murder Squad mystery series. Um, as I said I listened to it on audio and the narrator was a male with a really excellent uh, Irish accent uh, which made the story that much more atmospheric. It's, it's, uh, it was definitely a mystery and a suspense, but it was also a family drama um, centering on the detective's uh, immediate family, brothers and sisters, mother and father, and Faithful Place is the neighborhood in which he grew up and he has to go back after 22 years to solve uh, a murder mystery. And I really, really enjoyed this on audio. I thought it was excellent. So I definitely will be continuing on with that uh, Dublin Murder Squad series. Um, so that was uh, the second thing I completed. I'm now going to go to another clip which talks about my library books that I completed this month. So I finished two books that have to go back to the library. And I thought I would make sure I get these on film before I take them back. The first one that I completed was this one, No Is Not Enough, excuse me for the glare again, uh, by Naomi Klein. Um, and this subtitle on this is Resisting Trump's Shock Politics and Winning the World We Need. So I had picked this up. Um, it is on the National Book Award long list for the nonfiction category. I had read Naomi Klein last year. I read her book on um, climate change, which I can't even remember the title of it now, and I, I got quite a lot out of that in terms of the climate change uh, issue. But this book, um, I'm kind of disappointed actually that this book made it on the long list for the National Book Award because I don't really feel that it is a um, heavy hitter as far as nonfiction goes. This book had some really interesting parts that I felt um, were really thorough and that was the beginning part of this book which talks about um, Trump, Donald Trump and his rise uh, in politics and how he got elected and how he ran his campaign and how that actually happened um, after two terms of President Obama and I, I thought that whole part of the book was done really well and then the second half of the book is more about Klein's opinion on Hillary Clinton and Klein's opinion on Bernie Sanders and her opinion on how we move ahead and how we can sort of resist these shock politics, these this sort of Trump political world that we're in where everything is, you know, just one disaster after the other, just one tweet after the other and how we can resist that. But it it sort of, the book sort of ends up being a very long-winded letter to the editor. Not that it's not backed up with facts, but it just, it seems sometimes, I don't know if you, in your letters to the editor, in your local paper, how somebody who's clearly very intelligent will write a letter to the editor and then sort of go off on this tangent, um, some plan or idea that they have for making the world better and it sort of descends into um, not very realistic 
uh, worldview. And that's where I felt this ended up. Um, and that's kind of unfortunate because I think that Naomi Klein's a really good writer, but I think that this book was probably rushed to production to meet um, where we are today in politics. So I completed it. Um, I got some things out of it that I think were important, but I couldn't, I don't think that it's, you know, uh, the best book that I've read about uh, today's political climate by any means, or how we got to where we are, or what to do about it next. The next thing I tried to read from the library was White Trash, The 400 Year Untold History of Class in America by Nancy Eisenberg. Um, this is a huge chunkster of a nonfiction book that looks at um, class in America and how um, America is supposedly all about, you know, no class restrictions. Everybody succeeds based on the merits and based on their hard work and their willingness to put it all out there and why that's not really the case. But I only got 35 pages into this book and it's actually, um, I'm, I just gave up on it. This is a DNF for me. Um, I don't often DNF books, but this one was just super dry, really um, academic, read like a textbook, and I just, I just wasn't into it, and I'm not willing to commit the time that it would take to read a book this size if I'm not really into it. So I am going to return this to the library and move on with some other reads. And so what I'm currently reading, um, three things actively on the go this weekend. The first is a nonfiction, again, from the library, and this is Impossible Subjects, Illegal Aliens, and the Making of Modern America by May Nagai. Again, uh, this is in my sort of trying to educate myself about immigration in the United States. This uh, is um, something I saw recommended on Book Riot, I think. I just started it last night, and you can see I've already started tabbing. Um, things that I didn't know and want to remember. Uh, this book starts out talking about uh, when we first imposed quotas on immigration in 1924 um, and is going to sort of move in forward in time from that period in American history and talk about uh, immigration from that perspective. So looking forward to um, continuing my educational journey on that topic. For fiction, I have two things on the go. A book of short stories. This is Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri. Um, I've only read the first story uh, in this. It was sort of real realistic, which I like, and I kind of hope that the rest of this collection is more realist in nature. I tend to like short stories that are more realist rather than the uh, magical realism or fantastical. So, so far, so good. Um, although the first story was real really quite sad so hopefully they're not all super sad because <laughs> not really looking for the sad things right now the other thing I've started is N.K. Jemisin's The Stone Sky the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy um, and I am you know like 100 pages in so far absolutely loving it this was also my five-star TBR predictions uh, my five star predictions for my TBR video so we'll see how we go on but so far so good fell right back into the story with no problem, even though it's been about a year since I read uh, the last book, The Obelisk Gate, um, didn't have any trouble picking up where I left off. So that was good. I was a little bit concerned about that. So that's where I am right now with my reading. Um, I hope everybody out there is uh, reading some great books this weekend, and I will talk to you later.